Johnny Hernstein faced the veteran knuckleballer next. Barney Schultz winds. Here it is. Popped up. We got this ball game. Bill White waiting. And the Cardinals win. The Redbirds are only one game out of first place. So, Jack, we had passed Philadelphia, but the idle Cincinnati club still led. The Cardinals simply couldn't afford to lose. Young Ray Sadecki got the pitching assignment the next night, and after the Cardinals had scrambled to a 3-2 sixth inning lead, it was again Bill White who provided the insurance. The pitch is made by Boozer, and there's a drive to deep right center field. Way back, way back, near the clock. Home run for Bill White into the seats. Bill White was looking for a ball to pull. He got a fastball and he drilled it into the pavilion seats just below the clock, beyond the 354 mark, and back about five rows to put the Cardinals out in front, four to two. And again, the call went out to Borny Schultz. And Jack, what a job he did in those final few days. On that occasion, he worked beautifully through the seventh and eighth. We were sweating our ball game out and keeping an eye on the Reds as Schultz towed the rubber in the ninth. Pete Rose is the hitter with a runner on first and two out on the bottom of the ninth at Cincinnati. Three balls, two strikes. Here's a signal given. Barney Schultz winds. Here's the pitch to Triandis now. He stuck him out, swinging. Triandis goes down swinging. Two more and it'll all be over. Johnny Callison was next. One ball, no strike. Here's the pitch on the way. A high fly ball. Deep left center field. Flood going out. Brock is there. Lou's got it. Two out. That's two gone. And it all ended on a high note. Here's the pitch. A bouncing ball to Boyer. He's got it. Here's a throw. Cardinals win it. And look at those Redbirds bouncing around. The Cardinals have won their ball game, four to two. Pittsburgh has won. Pittsburgh won its ball game, two to nothing. It's over. Pittsburgh has just beat the Reds, two to nothing. The National League race is in a tie. Holy cow! Never has it been a more thrilling moment. Within 15 seconds after the Cardinals won. Mazeroski threw out Ruiz, and the Pirates shut out the Reds two to nothing. The National League race is all tied up, and the Phillies in third place stay only a game and a half out. That set the scene for Wednesday night, with Kurt Simmons opposing Jim Bunning as our Cardinals went for the sweep. The honorary mayor of Memphis, Tennessee, Tim McCarver, gave us a second inning lead. Two balls and a strike. Here's a pick. There's a drive right back. It might be. hit his ninth home out of the air. The Cardinals lead two to nothing. And that lead stood up. Another lefty, rookie Gordon Richardson, relieves Simmons when the Phillies threaten mildly in the late going. Here's how it ended. Two balls, two strikes. From the belt, the pitch. Here it is. A bouncing ball. They should do it. The Cardinals are in first place. The Redbirds win it eight to five. Gordon Richardson being congratulated. As Bobby Wine bounced to Grote, who tossed to Javier for the force out. And now the pressure has been put on by the Cardinals. The Cardinals have taken over first place, pending the outcome of the Cincinnati game. That one really did some pending. Until past 1 a.m., as Harry and I sat in a darkened and deserted Bush Stadium. We were receiving direct reports from Cincinnati on the progress of that game was in the top of the 16th, still a scoreless duel. A rookie catcher named Jerry May was hitting for the Pirates. And we, like you, heard this good news. He had the big run there at third. The ball is butted on the squeeze! We score! We score! And a Jerry May executes the 
executed a perfect squeeze, but they were looking for anything but that, and the Fox put on the suicide squeeze. Turned down and broke, and the ball was bunted perfectly along third, and the Pirates lead one to nothing. Harry Carey was his usual calm and collected self as we listened to the bottom of the 16th. 16 upon occasion, you know, has uh, been called a hot dog. He called himself that. But uh, one time he said, you think I'm a hot dog now? Wait till I win 20. <laughs> <laughs> pitch. Uh, ground ball. Schofield's got it at second. Throws. And it was off the back, but Clendenin grabbed and tagged him. One out. Two more. Let's go. A one, two, three, and out. No thrills. Uh, you've worked. Uh, you've done a tremendous job, Jim. There's a ground ball. Hit the Schofield. The duck is up. Throw to first. Two outs, Harry. One more, baby. <laughs> two men out. One more out. And your Redbirds will be in first place. You can see the pressure on the Bucks. I mean, Verdon is walking around in circles out in center field. Moda was doing the same thing in right. And Mazarowski drawing little designs with his feet down at second base. No balls, two strikes on Pinson. McBean is ready. Here comes the pitch to Veda. It's a ground ball to the right side. Mazarowski has it. You're in first place, Harry. <laughs> Excited we all were, Jack. And now the Cardinals led by one. But Thursday, the Reds bounced back, and the lead was down to a slim half game as the last place New York Mets came to town for the final three games of the season. On Friday, everybody lost. Gibson was shut out one to nothing by Al Jackson, and the Phillies came out of their trance and beat Cincinnati. Saturday, well, we'd rather not talk about Saturday. The Reds tied things while taking the day off as a supposedly inept Mets bombed the Cardinals 15 to 5. So we were right back where we started on opening day, April the 14th, tied for the lead. And it all boiled down to October the 4th, 1964. And so the whole season had come down to one day, one game. Still hopeful, trailing by one, the Phillies went at it again in Cincinnati. While in St. Louis, a grim group of Redbirds behind Kurt Simmons again faced a loose, relaxed bunch of Stengelites who knew they were going nowhere but home when it ended. But nobody in our club had done any packing. A second inning Mike Shannon single and a fourth inning Charlie Smith homer had things knotted at one to one as the Cardinals batted in the fourth. Dick Grote let off with a double, but McCarver and Shannon were unable to move him along. That brought Dal Maxfield to the plate. He was hitting only 222 and in the lineup only because of an injury to Javier. Too bad the youngster had to be hitting in the clutch. There's the stretch. And the pitch to Maxville. Here it is. Line drive. Base hit. Here's a man going to try to score. Here's Jim Hickman up with the ball. And he scores. The Cardinals lead 2-1. The Phillies led Cincinnati 4 to nothing, and the Cardinals had a slim lead. It didn't hold up. With a runner at second and one away in the fifth, Simmons appeared to get Bobby Klaus on an easy pop fly. But wait a minute. The delivery on the way. There's a high pop fly that should be caught by somebody. Maxville is there. He's under the ball. Oh, he lets it drop. And here's a runner around third holding up. Klaus winds up at second base. Shannon could have caught the ball. But Maxville had called for it. And the wind grabbed it. Come on, Mike, take those kind. <laughs> Gee, an easy pop fly. Now they have the leading run at second, the tying run at third. They put those runners elsewhere in a hurry, thanks to a tough little competitor named Roy McMillan. Infield in. Can Simmons pitch out of this? He's behind the hitter, two balls and nothing. Now he's ready. Into the windup he goes, and here's the pitch on the way. Line drive's gonna score both, and the Mets have taken the lead. Into the corner, McMillan's on his way to second base. A double to left, and the Cardinals trail three to two. McMillan, a tough hitter in the clutch. And now both of the two of the teams, right now, <laughs> if everything would end the way it is now, there'd be a triple tie starting tomorrow in Philadelphia.